All right, guys, we have my good friend, um, friend forever, Nikki Leone, the millennial chef from New York City. Hello. Who works at the uh, Food Network. She brought in all this healthy food. Uh, it smelled real good in here. Um, I love what you do because, and the way that you do it, because of the message that you're putting out there. Like, there's no excuses with you. Hey, you can get it done any place, any time. That's kind of like my same message, too. Right. You look at Nikki's uh, Instagram, and, and I watch them every Monday, uh, 7 o'clock yep. on Mondays. She does this whole 10-minute little spiel of, you know, healthy uh, meals that she's making. She's showing you exactly how to do it, what right. to put in it, what she's putting in it. Uh, how you can accomplish it, but it's in our little studio apartment That's right. in New York City, which is like square feet. 500 square feet, <laughs> and she's in like a shoebox of a kitchen, so she can do it in that, you know, we can do it anywhere, it's true. Um, and she's like elbow to elbow, she can't even open up the cabinets, the plates are on the toasters, <laughs> she's got a towel on, which is how I know you're a serious Always. cook with that towel, like just ready to cook with that thing on. It's true, um, that's how you know. And, you know, it, it's, it's very helpful. Um, but it's kind of like the same message that I give off, too. Actually, one time someone told me, like, I don't have anywhere to work out there. That's why I don't work out. So I did a video. I don't know if you saw that on my I Instagram. Saw. Of me working out on a toilet. I was squatting oh. on the toilet. I did some step-ups. Yeah. I did some push-ups. So point is, you can do it any place, <laughs> anytime. But I, I, like, I don't think I could do what you do, man. Like, cook for people. Yeah. Like, I would be too nervous. If I was cooking for, like, 25 people, man. I know. It, w it would sound like a tornado. Like, how nervous I'd be. My hands would be shaking. <laughs> I'd be dropping plates and pans everywhere. They'd be like, is he all right back They're there? Like, uh, What's going on with him? I'd be, like, like dropping uh, sauces on people, you know what I mean, as I'm serving them. How do, you, how do you not get nervous cooking for people like that? You know, honestly, I feel like in the beginning, I did get really nervous, you know, and after you do it over and over again, and, you know, it's cliche, but practice does make perfect. So once you do it over and over and you practice the stuff, it becomes second nature to you. So I'm no longer nervous cooking because I've been doing it so long, and right. I feel like, you know, if you do something over and over and you practice, you're going to be good at it. Mm -hmm. It's really that simple, you know? Yeah, I feel like that's with anything, really, in life, but, you know, and, and especially like with exercise, like, if you want to get good at a chin-up, you have to do a chin-up every day. You have to do a push-up every day, and it doesn't need to be, like, a really heavy exercise or anything yeah. along those lines, but, like, you need to start learning the pattern, but that's Absolutely. with anything in life, you know? To totally. Improve. I would think, like, the preparation, too. Like, it just seems like you're so prepared. Yeah, and, you know, especially for those Mondays, the Monday Live, the live stuff, I come home and I do a little bit of prep work, because otherwise, if I went up there and just started cooking, it would be an absolute disaster, so... I come home, I do the prep work, I get the, the vegetables, you know, cut and everything, I get the pots and pans ready, so you definitely need to prep for live videos in particular, but right. in general, you should prep and prepare yourself for sure. I think that's one of the most important tactics for success, that it sounds overly simplistic, but I just think it's something that some people either decide to do, Absolutely. the whole preparation thing, or they don't. I mean, definitely. you walk in my gym, it all, sometimes it doesn't even look like I'm doing anything, right. but it is the hours of relentless study, Absolutely. it's the hours of, you know putting the workouts together on a Sunday that I'm, we're going to be doing on Thursday oh, yeah. and bef well before clients get in here. It's nonstop. For sure. For and, and it's one of the biggest steps I think that you could take in order to have a, a successful product of anything. Absolutely. How did you, so the whole millennial chef thing. Right. What's the, what's the millennial chef? Okay. So the millennial chef is, I am, um, I'm half Italian. I'm a quarter Irish and I'm a quarter Luxembourgish. Luxembourg is a country. So I'm those th three things. Luxembourg. And <laughs> Luxembourgish. Luxembourgish. So I had, you know, really strong food cultures into my system. And my whole childhood was all about food. So we had these big, you know, macaroni and gravy. We had tons of food in our lives. So I took those recipes and I took those traditions and I turned them into millennial meals. Mm. So I made them healthier, a little bit quicker, new. And that's kind of where the millennial chef came to be. I, I moved out. I moved to New York and I started cooking all the time. So I used those old school stuff and I turned these new meals into millennial meals and the millennial chef came to be. See, I love that because that's more realistic for the everyday person, especially right. like the general population. If you're someone who's super strict with your diet, of course that's going to be that's going to be successful and it's going to be according to you. But you know, if you're uh, just an everyday person just trying to be healthier, oh absolutely, and looking to actually enjoy you know your food and not be too too strict about it, yeah, and be able to show up at the doctor's office with you know healthy blood levels, and right, on those lines. Yeah, it's like not crazy. Yeah, sense. it's it's not like super duper healthy and it's not like fried chicken every night. It's kind of an in between. Like you can have pasta, but you have a cup of pasta, and you can have fried chicken if you have one piece. It's that kind of thing. Like having moderation with all of your food. Right. You know, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, how are you not 500 pounds though? Cause... Well, 
Okay, so. I just feel like you wouldn't even be able to, like, talk to me if I was a cook. Like, people would be asking me questions. I'd be like, no. what's <laughs> Food would just be in my mouth. So, okay, so I feel like I, I get this question sometimes because I am cooking and I'm eating all day long. It really is all I'm doing. But, so it's kind of like a two part answer. So, I do workouts in the morning. I'm not just like a total slob. I do these workouts in the morning and actually. I don't think you're a slob at all. So, I am a little bit. But, so I got these workouts from you and I'm not just saying this. So, when I first moved home, when I actually graduated college, I came to this gym for a year. And this is the only gym I went to steadily in my whole life was this gym. That you say consistently? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because really? I'm not a big gym goer. I mean, I'm not this huge working out person. I'm not. But the only actual workouts that I've used are from this gym. Very cool. So I do them in the morning. I do like a 30 minute workout in the morning. And then obviously I, my, um, I eat in moderation. So I'm not eating these huge piles of food. I'll make this meal and I'll have a little, you know, one serving size for me. I feel like that's kind of how I maintain a healthier lifestyle, those two things. So just portion size. Portion size, 100%. And yeah. then workouts too. Right. But I feel like the portion size are... So one of my like 30-minute workouts. Yeah, absolutely. So you have to stare at me for 30 minutes. I have to That's stare at horrible. you. That really is frustrating for me. <laughs> but it's not, once I get past your face and I actually do it, you know... <laughs> Then you can move on. Then I can move on. But and portion size is so important. I mean, and it's and it's a played out concept, but I mean, it is that, man. I mean, it's so important to it's not so overeat, you know. And then we eat too often, and we eat way too much, and way more than we think we need to. Absolutely, in totally. Um, what about how you got like how does what do you do with the Food Network? Like, I would just think you, you're just eating all day. Or? Yeah, that's a prereq. You have to, <laughs> you have to must eat as much eat food as possible, food, and then you're hired. Like yeah, it's like if you eat food, you're hired. That's how I got the job. No, so Food Network, I handle all of the on-air promotions for Food Network and Cooking Channel. Mm. So whatever you see when you're watching the Food Network or Cooking Channel, if you see any like 30-second promo promoting our networks, I'm scheduling those. So you're like one of those people where it's like, eat, eat some ice cream like, now. <laughs> Call now and yes, get your shake. That's correct. It's tough, man, when you know food's being brought to us on, on so many levels and we don't know what to read or what to believe when we're reading or what's right and what's wrong. And then there's a bunch of confusion, especially when certain things are labeled as healthy, quote unquote, right. you, know, um, you know, even certain protein bars, you know, just because they have a gram of protein in them doesn't make it a healthy, you know, thing that you should eat. It has right. tons of sugar in yeah. some cases. I'd much rather eat a Snicker bar <laughs> than some of these protein bars with the amount of, you know, ingredients and right. just, you know, you look at like a Nutri-Grain bar, there's like goo in it and yeah. they call it cherry bar, you know, <laughs> you hear the word cherry and you You're think like, it's healthy. Ooh. And so it can be you know, a little misleading, especially right. with like restaurants, you know, uh, you can go to a restaurant and think you're getting a turkey burger, you know <laughs> what I mean? And then who knows how much butter they put in. You're like, this is the best turkey burger I've ever yeah, had. It's this like, thing is it's, absolutely amazing, but there is a pound fried. of butter. And, right. <laughs> deep fried and stuff with mozzarella and all the above. Right. Yeah. I think at restaurants, the important thing is to... You know, uh, I think you've said this before, like take the bun off and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. That's, I, you know, you can even get a regular burger, obviously, mm -hmm. and just have the, the actual patty with a salad. Absolutely. And I do stuff totally, like that all the time. Of that course. is, that's doable. Yes. And for sure. And it's delicious. And now you're getting and vegetables and you're getting good proteins. Right. And sometimes you could even ask the waiter or waitress, or, you know, maybe it's not on their menu, but communication with your waiter and waitresses, like. People, you know, will help you. Don't feel weird about asking for something that's healthy or maybe they can improv a little bit for you. Like if you want some broccoli that with a little bit of butter and garlic, if they don't offer that instead of the fries, you know, maybe they'll do that for you. And now all of a sudden you just cut out all those bad carbs and all those, you know, grease and Right, but you also don't want to be like a total jerk and no. be like the person who's like, can I get a side of... <laughs> you ever, you ever go out to eat with it? someone and they morph into like this machine um, of like yeah. asking for like the manager and like yes. uh, telling your waitress off and it's like, whoa, um, what's, <laughs> what happened with you here? Yeah, they, this whole they're, no, thing. no, no, they're no longer my friend after that. Then you it's like tell a lot about someone's personality or who they are by just going out to eat with them. Absolutely. If you're rude to us, any like staff of any kind, especially in the service industry... You're no longer my friend. You probably get that a lot. That's right? how I feel. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like you just should be respecting everybody, obviously. Sure. And these, you know, don't be an asshole. That's yeah. what I feel. Uh, Mr. Manager. Yeah, like <laughs> this is cool. Like, no, just oh, obviously. Yeah. I don't even know. No, I'm not <laughs> sitting there for the manager to call my No, <laughs> like uh, and the, I agree with you though. Like, you can definitely say, "Hey, can I um have a salad instead of the fry?" And you do it politely. That's a and big you can, one. You can do it, but just don't 
overdo it yes. and be obnoxious to the people you're sitting But feel at free with. to ask for it because people you know? definitely feel shy about yes. that. And, you know, you do can... Do it politely. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just because everyone around you is making bad choices or even, you know, if yeah. they're trying to peer pressure you to a degree, it's okay to say no, you know. And I, I, also another big one is, like, people uh, think because you're at certain restaurants, you know, that you can't select good choices, like right. we're saying. You know, I, I go to the buffet sometimes, <laughs> and the buffet has, and of course, you know, is it grass-fed, is it organic? No, no, I know. But, but you can go to the, um, the area of the buffet that does a stir-fry, and now I'm getting... Um, green peppers and broccoli right. and onions I, and I'm getting chicken totally. and beef and I put some shrimp in there and I'm getting a delicious stir fry. I agree. You know, or something as delicious as what you brought in. Or the salad works. You know, people correlate salad works with getting the rolls and the pasta that you got to put on the right. – or the gallon Don't of dressing rather than just a like, scoop. <laughs> right. You can make better choices. In yeah. fact, I went to the gas station today. You saw the picture. Uh, yes. You know, um, you know, I'm holding up for those of you just listening, but I have eggs. This is from 7-Eleven. Seriously. Eggs, you know, for Fantastic proteins and good fats. I got pistachios. Love I got a pistachios. whole thing of turkey. This was all in the refrigerator. I, know. I got, you know, protein bars here and, you know, some beef jerky with some fruit. And yeah, you don't have to get the taquito. Bar- you can get. <laughs> they're you, good, though. They're so no, good, though. Drinking, they're like, so good. How long are you good. cooking <laughs> that thing up for? 30 seconds? Are you no. like a fully cooked? Oh, fully cooked. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. Sloppy and You're just like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but those are so. I used to get those all the time. But obviously, if you're making healthy choices, yes. don't get the taquito. Right. And the point Clear. is, Clear. no taquitos. <laughs> but the point is, you can make good choices. You don't yes. need to have the taquito, taquito, but you can get these choices but they're delicious. that we just named. Um, speaking of like making right or wrong choices, right. when people are cooking, what do you think the biggest mistakes that people make when they're actually cooking? So I've noticed that the biggest mistake people do when they're cooking is they make too much food. Mm. And listen, I am actually one of those people. I used to be, excuse me, I used to be one of those people who it would be me and Andrew eating dinner and I would have serving sizes for six, like six people's worth right. of food. And that's just whether I just was doing it over time. I just when you're cooking, it should, if it's two people, Absolutely. you should cook for two people. Yeah. And I just get it. You want left. Yeah. You're like, no, because honestly, if it's on the table, I feel like sometimes we have this like psychological thing where you have to finish it. Mm. So make enough for the two people who are eating the three, the four people, and that's it. Yeah. So the portions that you're actually making is huge. Don't overdo it. I find that happens all the time with people. Right. And understand what true portion size is. Right. I mean, a lot of people think it's the size of the plate, but often oh, it'll be like not. way smaller than we even think. Right. And, you know, if you're a food prep person, you know, so am I. But you have to get discipline in the sense of, you know, if you're going to food prep, don't eat the entire thing. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> and another big no, one, that's true. you know, I think uh, th- that people make mistakes with is adding too much like preservatives or adding too much uh, ingredients, and especially one right. being sugar. I don't think we okay. realize how much sugar we truly consume uh, on a daily basis, you know, and how bad sugar truly is for us. And it's, you know, it, um, studies show the endless amounts of problems that it gives in, in, as far as like testosterone and males, um, how it tricks our mind because sugar has a substance in it that tricks us into thinking that we're hungry when we're not really hungry and Jesus. it speeds up the aging process and Ooh. it wrecks your skin. Ooh. Um, no, and thank it's you. for sure an addiction. So you have to find ways to get it out of your system, which I'll give you some tips on. But if, in, and a lot of people get confused as to what sugar is or how to look for it or how to find it. But think like anything that has, that even says corn on it. You know, right. corn uh, and high fructose corn syrup is the number one highest uh, calorie producing uh, food in in America. So we have to really watch anything that says that. And then refined carbs, right? So like candies, obviously, right. um, and Not sweeteners great. and all that stuff. But, you know, breads and pastas and, you know, uh, the cereals and chips and things along those lines. You know, they just add fat to your body. Definitely. And they just consume too much and they give you love handles and all and, that kind of stuff. And not good for your skin. And they are not good for your not skin. Not good for your skin. Um, and we eat it all day if you think about it. You know, if you wake up and you have a bowl of cereal and then you have a sandwich, and even if the sandwich is, you know, 100% whole wheat bread and you had both pieces of bread and you didn't right. cut that bread in half, <laughs> and then, you know, at night you did have whole wheat pasta, you know, that's great, but you had whole wheat pasta plus right. bread plus, you know, and then. It adds up. Yeah, of course. So you're just essentially eating sugar all day long. Um, I think one of the biggest solutions would be getting more, uh, finding ways to regulate your insulin levels so that you're not having spikes all day long. Excuse me. You know, um, where you can consume some, uh, I think an important step to this is consuming more protein. Um, I don't think we consume enough protein. I think that we have to get good, healthy fats into our diet, you know, 
cooking maybe with avocados or eating, you know, uh, pistachios or almonds or coconut oil and eating more fiber, man, um, getting more greens into our diet, you know, uh, and, and berries and things along those lines. But, you know, if you really need those sweeteners, you have to switch over instead of just packets of sugar, <laughs> you know, because we don't even realize, you know, sometimes if I were to have packets of sugar here, sometimes there's like eight, nine I packets know. of sugar that I'd be opening, right. you know, and just pouring into right. some of my cups with some of the drinks that we consume or the amounts of sugar that, that we consume. So you have to switch over to things like organic stevia, you know, or make or eating fruit. You know, the basics really go a long way, you know, fruit instead of uh, instead and of like a candy bar. You know? Coffee is better without sugar. Just side note, I feel mm. like you don't need sugar in your coffee. Mm. You drink it black? No, I put a little bit of cream. But Did you ever put like um, butter and protein? And no, I didn't like, all? no, Never I, tried it? I didn't try that. But I hear it's really good. It is good. But I just do like a little splash of cream and that's, you don't need sugar in your coffee. If you do like the coffee, I mean, there's uh, debunks on it, but you know, right. the whole bulletproof coffee thing where yeah. you can add some protein. Now you are getting protein, you're getting right. your coffee. I mean, there's definitely studies on six to eight ounces of black coffee. Uh, there's some Olympic athletes taking that and what it does for actually fat loss and it, it shows true good signs of you okay. know health benefits that okay, just coffee has, you know. Um, what about like people that are on strike over vegetables? Like they're just walking around and they're just like, I will not eat vegetables. I don't care what you say, what you do, how you do it. All right. I'm not doing it. What about Listen, again, also, sides? also not my friend, but just kidding. So, okay. I have this trick for people who hate vegetables and it's definitely not the most, it's not the healthiest option in the whole entire world, but for the people who have no vegetables in their diets at all, you do something called brown butter. Yeah. So you literally just put just one tablespoon of butter into a pan and you toast it and it turns in this like nutty, like brown, delicious flavor and you put it over any vegetable you have and that will make any veggie hater into a veggie lover. You've had I people mean that, that have done this? And oh, well, for, I've eaten my like whole, yeah, so I've eaten this my whole life. My whole family has, like my grandma showed this, showed us this whole brown butter thing, but I even got kids. I had kids who obviously hate vegetables, loving their vegetables because of this brown butter. So thing. you're like a brown butter witch. You're I like am. Just tricking these kids in there. <laughs> I'm like the cold <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? Like, and even with that, like people will hear like, oh, butter, brown butter. But you, what are you saying? Like just a little bit? A, a, one tablespoon. Let's say, you have a whole, let's say you have a pound of string beans or a pound of broccoli. Do one tablespoon of butter, mm. brown a little bit on the, on the oven, in the oven, on the stove, and then pour it on the vegetables. And I don't think that you can say that I want to get into the best shape of my life or Derek, like I'm really ready to get, you know, to take it to the next level and say that you don't want to eat vegetables in the same sense. Absolutely. I think that if you want to be, you know, optimally healthy and if you want to see true results in, you know, in your health and in your physique, you need to be consuming vegetables. You can't skip that. 100%. One big thing, I'll definitely try that brown butter thing. Oh, it's so good. No, it's a game changer. On anything. On, on anything. All right. Just Sorry. stew it up. Just that's the cold drink. <laughs> Get the kids <laughs> in the place. Shmum. Come on, kids. <laughs> um, one thing that I try to do is uh, have people drink, you know, the greens or yes. especially, you know, or, yeah. or vegetables, but especially greens. Um, to me, I happen to like it. But first off, if you, you know, you have to have some discipline and there are going to be times, man, where you're going to need to suck it up. You know, totally. so what I found with shakes is where I'll make this little green shake with spinach and kale and I'll do um, uh, whey um, vanilla protein, mm -hmm. um, low in sugar and dump that in there. And I'll do some flax seeds and uh, avocado, a little scoop of peanut butter, not Yum. like a shovel's worth. You know what I mean? And <laughs> put some control. ice in there and then I put some water in there. And right. It's delicious, man. I yeah. personally like that. But I can understand like if you're not a green lover or you're a vegetable, not a vegetable lover. I wouldn't like that. Some celery stalks. Could you put like a little piece of fruit? Could you be like an apple in there to make it a little I bit do. better? I do. Sometimes right? I put it like a banana or even berries. Yeah. Especially in the morning with the that benefits of the berries greens. having in the morning. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And it gives it that good little kick. Right. But here's the thing. Like if you're not, if you don't want to chew your vegetables or even if the brown butter doesn't do it for you. Right. You know, sometimes just drinking it. And yeah. if you are a vegetable liker, like now you're going to, I mean, I can drink way more than I can chew. Even right. Even though I can chew a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I can you know, you're going to be able to consume vegetables at a higher rate and a, and a, um, in, in a higher amount as right. well, you know. So it's a good way to kind of sneak them in there, you know. I agree. Um, I like so you brought shake. all this delicious food with you. So I brought in some food. Let's show some of this stuff. I'm here. really excited about this. I, I want to eat it. Yeah, you got to eat it. I'm just trying to speed this thing up here. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's do it. Let's do Okay, so first we have 
these are my quinoa cups, and they're on my website, themillennialchef.com. And yeah, these are them right there. They are, it's quinoa, eggs, spinach, tomatoes, and some cheese. That's it. That's the whole entire thing. You mix it up, you pour it in little muffin tins, and then you put it in the oven for 20 minutes on 375. And they are the best snack. They're healthy. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can make them ahead. You can bake them. Yeah. I, I really like, like them. You like did them in like little muffins. Yes. Yeah. They're delicious. Seriously, they're like, they're I like very all addicting. My cooking voice she trans- <laughs> transitioned right into the cooking voice. I know, sorry. That's legit. Come on, what do you think of that? That's and amazing. don't just say it's good. Like, no, no, listen. That's amazing. Well, I, have I, mean, it I like anything, but that is very good. Right? And it's, it's one of those things where you can make the whole thing and then put these all in the freezer, and they yeah. last for months, maybe not months, but a month, and then whenever you're ready to eat them, you just put them in the oven. That's and, a big and, thing. and heat them up, and you can have them any time of the day. It's a great breakfast. So you can freeze these, and you then can you're freeze. eating them all throughout the week. So yes. here's a great option for breakfast, guys, for some people who are asking what to eat. Because, yes. So um, quinoa and uh, some eggs. Quinoa, eggs, spinach, tomato, and cheese. Yep. And, what, and exactly, what exactly is quinoa? So quinoa is, well, it's a protein. So it's mm-hmm. very similar to rice, but it's this really healthy protein that – goes in a million different recipes is my favorite thing to eat and cook so think about the breakfast there i mean you can freeze these they're like little muffins of healthy breakfast yes greens and delicious you can get them at any supermarket proteins and good clean fats yes all right so here's something you can make and again all this stuff is going to be, we're gonna take pictures of it um and then uh, nick's gonna share all the recipes with us and we can get the recipes on your website Th- these are all my website the three we're going to show they're all my website which so you is can see the www.themillennialchef.com. Okay, easy enough. Yes. Um, now, should we do this one next? Yes, this will be next. All right. Okay, and this you guys next. get the look. And I'll then, make it go. <laughs> and then we get to have, we're going to have a little bowl here. We'll be adults and put it into a bowl. Okay, so this here is. Got some string bean in there? Yeah, so it's a cauliflower and broccoli stir fry. But there's absolutely no rice in this, it's all vegetable based. Move so, that mic up just a little bit. You oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. so this is all um, vegetable based. I, um, it's cauliflower and broccoli. That's the base, and then I threw in some carrots, string beans, some bok choy, and I actually use rotisserie chicken, which is a lot easier to do. Right. You just buy the chicken, shred the meat off, mix it in, and then you have a nice little sauce on it. Just so this is again and... a stir fry that is full of vegetables. Yes. Full of healthy proteins. All you vegetables. can freeze it. Um, so you use a rotisserie chicken. So how much did something like this? Cost you cheap. this? Yeah, probably like fifteen bucks total. Which is cheap for cheap. you're gonna get at least what five six. And this meals? is not even the whole thing. Right. I only this was like a, like half of what I made before. How long did that take you to make? It took me twenty minutes. So there's another great option, guys. Yeah. You know, eating that for lunch, you could even eat it for breakfast, but you definitely could have it for dinner. And it's versatile in that you can use any vegetables you have on hand. Mm. So you don't have like you could have two vegetables in there with but you obviously need cauliflower and then throw in vegetables, a little soy sauce, vinegar, and that's the whole thing. Are you okay. It's really, and cauliflower is trendy right now, and it's trendy for a reason because it's really versatile. You can make it into pizza crust. You yep. can do rice like this. You can do all sorts of things. I bet I won't even taste it in a good way. Oh, absolutely. Right? You won't taste it. I'm going to chew right into the mic. Just, just chew really loudly. Open your mouth, too. Sorry if that's gross for you guys. But um, that is outstanding. And you think it, I swear you think that it's rice. Like, I'm not just saying that it actually tricks your mind. All right, I'll have one bite, too. That's delicious, man. Right? Wow. I can't wait to get done this and eat that. <laughs> <laughs> um, One of my favorite. I actually, excuse me, now I'm talking my face. Yeah. No, I like it. It has a good little kick, but it has like, I taste the chicken. I taste like the consistency. Yes, oh, the sriracha is the kick. Yep, I didn't spit sriracha. it out. No. <laughs> I didn't throw that right I in the I make trash. this once a week, seriously. This really? Is, this is my one of That's those rotating go-to. dinners. I make these once a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you brought in a little chili. Yes. Which... We can get All right. here. I'll another grab it. another staple. This dish is so good. And again, sorry, I'm just. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Should we move that? Yeah, let's move this out of the way. Yeah. It's a little large, but that's okay. I'm just gonna hold this in the meantime. Smell okay. this, baby. Ooh, that's good. Okay, so this, you guys, is I actually made this on one of my live episodes. I made this one of the Monday nights, so it's on my Facebook. It's my turkey chili. Mm. Again, healthy as can be. Ground turkey, I have peppers, onions, zucchini, and chickpeas with some tomato sauce. Wow. That's, and obviously spices, whatever you can do. I do chili powder and cumin. Right. And it's, like, it's so delicious. And what are you adding to that? 
like is, is there's no like lots of sugar there's no like no it tastes that's it and huh? salt and pepper that's the only seasoning you're doing here use this one and again not to be repetitive but here's a bowl of essentially proteins a bowl of good healthy fats Absolutely. You, you can add some broccoli in there and oh spinach yeah or whatever you can throw but, whatever vegetable you want the right. same exact thing with with the um the cauliflower rice you can do the same with the turkey chili <clears throat> okay. these are really versatile so whatever your palate is that's what you can make the, the meal into and I think this actually, out of all of these, this is my favorite. Is this going to be like super spicy? Not at all. No, I, I was mild just in case you did like spice. I went really low. Oh, paprika's in there too. But this is my favorite. No, that. Right. That's banging. This I'm is a chili my guy, but that's Me real good. Too. And it's, you know, it's a little bit different than your traditional chili where you have the pinto beans and lots of chili powder, ground beef, the you sour, just keep cream, going. Just... sour cream. <laughs> Sour cream. There's no sour cream. You don't need to have over rice. You just have a bowl of this, and that's your dinner. And it's so filling. Girl. It's really good. No, serious. You are on to something. So, yeah, this is, that's my favorite one of all of them. And I'm all these are on my this. website, you guys. They are absolutely delicious. Thank you so much. Here. Just I love that. Over there. Yeah, that's my favorite. It's a really good one. And, again, you know what? I, I feel like for all three, or for these two in particular, you obviously don't want to have – five bowls of these the same concept have one bowl and that's yeah. all you need you're filled and you're done for sure and actually i'm gonna eat it so it won't be a waste but let me do this and it and that's really and of course this depends on the person but i'm just saying for the general person right let's say one cup right so if you can imagine if you can't see if you're just listening right i don't even have it how many inches would you say that is? not maybe an inch Right. Not that, even. That's what she said. <laughs> but um, it's like filled up a Let's little hope bit. she doesn't say that. <laughs> yes. Um, so, you know, there is a portion size. And I'll take right. a picture of that. But, uh, you know, Maybe what do we more. do? We fill it up again. Right. And then we fill it up a little bit higher. That's or, right. the worst, we go back for seconds. Right. So you eliminate the seconds. You eliminate filling up that plate or that bowl too much. That's and right. now you're saving calories right there, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. So that's important. And quickly, I, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of structure now that we're going along with it. Nick, that was delicious. Thank, Thank you so much. And I can't wait to eat it all. Yeah, that's all for you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Um, we, so here's some structure for you guys, right? People ask me all the time. One of the biggest questions I get. Okay. I think you've even asked me, what do I eat, right? So here's some simple, here's some simple structure. Right, and then if you want, you know, further detail, or I can give it to you even better. You know, I can email you or message you, or I'll post it. But if you have time for breakfast, obviously the quinoa cups, perfect quinoa cups. idea, right? Or some eggs with a piece of toast, wheat toast, and some fruit in the morning. Definitely. Okay. Um, from there, maybe an apple for a snack. From there, a salad. Get the healthy greens going. Get put sure. as much greens in there as you can. Broccoli and spinach and, and kale. Uh, and, and then get some protein going in there. So uh, maybe choose chicken and then um, do another snack. And, and towards the night, I like to start uh, – I like to carb up a little bit earlier in the day. Of course, you know, there's Me 40 too. different ways to do this. And, of course, it depends on the person. Yeah. I generally try to recommend that uh, carbs being in the format of, of course, like 100% whole wheat and – uh, fruits and, and vegetables come before the actual resistance training exercise or hard, vigorous um, cardiovascular exercise before or after, right? So like a sweet potato or something along those lines. So I try to get people to do to focus on that before or after or earlier in the day. And then as the day diminishes, um, proteins and then fats are going to – good healthy fats are going to become your friend. So like avocados and almonds and yeah. things I mentioned earlier in the podcast – coconut oil you know because just because it's going to make your body feel more full and you know we like that feeling of of feeling full before we go to bed and some, some people and i've asked people That's and i've big. read studies and for myself included yeah um i go to bed better and i sleep deeper when i have some healthy fats in the system you know I agree. so if you did you know the eggs with the uh wheat toast and an apple and then you have your salad with chicken and then a healthy snack like like pistachios oh. right and then you could have your um the cauliflower, cauliflower stir, stir fry, fry for dinner or the delicious chili. Cut, right or, or the you have the chili <laughs> right, right? And say you don't have a lot of time in the breakfast, you know, the only thing I would change is maybe you're grabbing a protein bar on the go or you could, you know, and a banana and a water and you're hitting the car or you're filling up the uh, protein in the coffee like we just talked about with some right. butter and get some healthy bats in True. there, you know. 
But you have to make sure every single day that you're getting enough greens and vegetables in your system, that you're drinking enough water, that you're not consuming too much sugar, that you're doing the basics. You know, are you eating too much food? Are you eating for two people or are you eating for one people? Are you eating till you're 80% full or so full that you can't breathe every single time that That's you eat? Big too. You know, um, and then, you know, is the food that you're eating, is it helping you get closer to your goals or further away? You know, is it fuel for your body or are we just eating to live, you know? Um, so, you know, these basic steps, man, they go a long way. Um, but you know, basic structure. And if you don't have time, stop at the gas station and make the right choices, you right. know, but protein, good, healthy fats, good greens, lots of water, right? Don't overeat. I concur. Um, why is it like, so let's end with this. Okay. Why do you cook? Like, why, why are you the millennial chef? Why? Cause <laughs> you know, we question. went to high school together right? and then you were just and then you you know we were living here and you just trained here and then mm-hmm. you're like dude I'm gonna go follow my dream I want to do this like, yeah what, what, what happened there like why are you doing what you do so honestly I feel like cooking and food like everybody speaks the language of food you know it's it's really as simple as that it's one of those things that truly it, you know it's it's cliche but it just brings people together yeah. you know no matter what your race is your age your gender your socioeconomic status everybody speaks the same language of food. So it's a great conversation starter. It brings you closer to different people maybe you wouldn't be close to. Mm. And at the end of the day, I get to eat all of the food <laughs> that I'm cooking. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's a combination of those things. But I just think it's a really cool way to meet people and to talk to different people. And it just everybody speaks the language of food. Yeah. You know? People get happy. They you know? do. They get really happy. And everyone, you know, everyone loves talking about their favorite foods and their culture's foods. And then you learn about theirs and you talk about yours. And it's just this really cool experience. And, I mean, I've been having so much fun with this. I'm really loving it. I think one of the, uh, uh, like, something that's important, too, is actually, so you're not only cooking, but you're cooking healthy foods and you're giving off this message of everything we just talked about in the podcast. That right. You actually consume delicious food in a healthy demeanor. And with less of it, where it can actually improve your life. So you can get the same benefits of like that right. delicious, unhealthy meal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where you actually That's enjoy huge. sitting down to eat it with friends. Yes. And it's still delicious, but it's healthy, you know? Absolutely. And I get that same exact feeling with, you know, the reason that I do what I do and the people that I'm around. Because, you know, that first time that someone does something that they've never done before or feels a way in which that they deserve to feel that they haven't felt so long, you know what I'm saying? Right. Or uh, gets involved with something or a community or smiles for the first time in maybe a year, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just has an empowerment about them and takes the right necessary steps to improving every aspect of their life. You're changing people's lives. Right. Seriously. So when you do things that are impactful, and it doesn't have to be being a trainer. It doesn't have to be, you know, cooking or, you know, but doing something for someone else and, and also like finding something that you really enjoy doing. I mean, there's huge benefits in it and in, in longevity of your, of your life and your lifestyle and for being happy, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. This is so much fun. It's great. This stuff smells good. It's I can't wait cold. to eat it all. I'm, gonna I'm actually going to eat it. Yeah, just, forget the portion size. Yeah, sorry guys. We're finishing <laughs> every single key book. Ignore everything you said. Thank you so much for, for doing this. <laughs> Millennialchef.com. Guys, we'll post all the uh, recipes and any questions you have, let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Nick.